Welcome back. Now, the Office of the Auditor General of the Federation has indicted the Nigerian Police High Command over alleged disappearance of 178,459 different types of arms and ammunition from uh, police armories in 2019 without any trace or formal reports on their whereabouts. The Auditor General of the Federation's annual report on the non-compliance struck internal control weaknesses Issues in ministries, departments, and agencies of the federal government shows that 88,078 AK-47 rifles, 3,907 assorted rifles and pistols from different formations nationwide could not be accounted for as at January 2020. So where have all these weapons gone to? This is a very grave report from the Auditor General of the Federation. The report which was submitted to the National Assembly was generated from the review of arms movement register, monthly return of arms and ammunition, and ammunition register at the armory section of the Nigeria police. The report also accused the headquarters of the Nigerian police force of lacking comprehensive details of unserviceable weapons, fearing that such weapons could actually find their way into wrong hands. The Auditor General thereafter blamed the situation and alleged weaknesses in the internal control system at the Nigeria Police Force. At a time when Nigeria is dealing with very serious security challenge and the proliferation of sophisticated weapons and firearms with non-state actors and criminals in the country, this report is by every means frightening. The police hierarchy needs to uh, provide some plausible explanation now as to how this came about. Besides, the National Assembly needs to get to the root of this matter. 178,459 assorted police weapons in the hands of criminal non-state actors is something very serious. But let's get the opinion of someone now who could help us uh, provide some insights now into the situation. David Okoro, who is uh, the Chief Security Strategist for International Institute for Security and Governance Studies, uh, joins us now on the program via Skype from Abuja. Thank you very much uh, ve for, for joining us on the program, Mr. Okoro. Um, first up, when you read this report, what did you make of it? Well, uh, yes, these are some of the things we always know, but just that now it's coming from official government source, and the quantity um, uh, the, is, is the problem. We've always known that... Uh, that part of the uh, light, uh, small weapons uh, that are out there that we talk about all the time, most of it uh, also comes from the regular law enforcement agencies. Mm. But the figure that have been put out here by the Auditor General, even though this is still not the comprehensive figure, some things have been left out, is, uh, is worrisome for everybody. And to know that uh, this news was likely broken by Reuters, which is an international news agency, tells you that the internationalization of uh, this uh, crisis that we face. So what it means, my brother, is that when next a Nigerian, uh, a, a kidnapper, uh, uh, um, kidnap Nigerians and put a gun in somebody's head, that gun could just have been uh, one of the guns that were bought originally for Nigerian police force. So it, it is worrisome and it is, uh, it is something that I think that uh, should immediately draw the attention of the authorities. I, I, it, it's again, what is more scandalous, and I want you to react to that, is the fact that the report says the Nigerian police does not have records of these missing weapons. It's, it's basic, essentially literally not keeping records. So there's, there's no records to show that these weapons, uh, the, the, that's the movement of these weapons now. No, no record at all. The, 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 the weapons just disappeared into thin air and um, no explanation. I think, uh, yes, uh, to, to, I, I think it's, it also goes back to the word I use that it's worrisome because uh, the, the, from here, I don't want to indict the police, but from what you have seen, it's clear that the police does not have record. Otherwise, you will ask yourself the question. So if, if this quantum of ammunition, by the way, it means, what this means is that uh, the, the, the quantum of uh, AK-47 that have been stolen from the police come to like 2,300 per state where we to share these arms, uh, this uh, AK-47 unit among the 36 states and Abuja. It means that each state and the federal capital will have 2,300. That means that this quantum of weapons are in the hand of non-state actors. So it's a big problem. But the question you ask 
about the fact that the police does not have record. It's part of our problem. I mean, you go to most government agencies, they don't have. But the fact that it's the police should worry everybody. It means the police does not have. And, 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 and these are just part of the uh, very, very of the problems that we have. It's much deeper than this. Truly, if you have worked closely with the police, you will know that a lot of records are not available. And, and when, when you read the report further, you get the impression that uh, it, it would seem the Auditor General's office uh, didn't get um, the full cooperation of, of the police in, in, in preparing, in doing this audit. Because at some point, the report says um, it, it could not ascertain the value of these weapons because the police did not provide any documentation at all as to the cost of uh, the acquisition of these weapons. But that's what I said, that uh, these figures that you have been given uh, provisional, they are actually not the exact figures because even the information upon which the Auditor General worked to provide this, this uh, data is, um, to me, there, there are a lot of issues with it. So really, uh, we have issues with, with the quantum of um, arms that is available in the police, the, uh, the numbers that uh, are functional, the numbers that are serviceable, and all that. I, I think that from the report itself, again, like I said, I won't speak for anybody. It tells you that something is wrong. You know that the Auditor General are inquirers, they are, they are investigators. So most times, nobody wants to give them information. So what they brought out from the police, I'm even surprised they are able to get a, a level of, uh, a level of uh, cooperation to, to be able to bring out this. And, and for you, what, what exactly does this say about the Nigerian police? Because just as you said, you know, this thing has gone global. The information has gone global. Yes, I, I wouldn't blame the police. See, the police of any nation is, uh, is a reflection of the people. The police force or the police service in any nation or law enforcement is a reflection of the people. Who determines who is recruited into the police? It's not controlled by the inspector general of police. It's the politician out there. It's the traditional rulers. Hmm. How police, are, men and women are recruited is that slots are given. The Senate president gets certain slots. Uh, the deputy Senate president gets certain number of people. So. Many times, the police really have little, uh, no control about who is recruited into the police force itself. So starting from recruitment, and then you are talking about posting, and you are talking about uh, promotion, discipline. Most of these are not under the ambit of the police. It is, it is something that the society forces on them. So most times, the police make do what they have. Uh, even the equipment, the availability of the equipment, the training of the manpower to run them, all these are not done normally. They are influenced by extraneous forces that have nothing to do with policing. And uh, uh, by the way, I, I always feel sorry for the IG, the uh, Inspector General of Police, because he is perhaps one of the uh, least, um, least uh, a chief executive that is allowed to do his work. Because remember, you have a police service commission that plays a role in policing of, of the country. You have the Ministry of Police Affairs. You have the Senate Committee on Police, the House. So when you put all these together, they interfere in the day-to-day -day operation of the Nigerian police. So it, it is not surprising that you have a crisis situation like this. And, and so if you want to really dig, you'll find that the police really are not 100% um, to blame because it is within the context that they work. Posting of commissioner police is not done based on any, any known um, scientific or policy. It is done, it's a political issue. Promotion many times is either co by corruption or by political influence, by the acquisition of police equipment also is done by political influence. So at the end of the day, yes, we blame the Nigerian police, but we need to look at the role of the generality of the Nigerian society to tell you what kind of police that we have. But, 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 so it, it should worry you, really, my brother, that we have this quantum of guns from paid for by the Nigerian uh, public in the hand of non-state actors. These are what we call the drivers of the insecurity we have in Nigeria. So as long as hmm. it is, why is it possible? The question you should ask yourself is, why is it possible for people to buy, to buy police, to buy guns, to buy uh, weapons of the police? The same way it is possible to buy intelligence from the police. It is possible to be possible to buy intelligence from the police, to be possible to buy operational information from the police, to be possible to buy all sorts of things from the police. It means, therefore, that uh, when you have an operational order put in place by the police, after all, somebody can sell it to the criminal elements. That is why you find, because it is possible to buy weapons from the police and other law enforcement agencies, buy critical intelligence information, buy operational information, 
That is why you find the that largely operations are ineffective. That is why you find it is easy for criminal elements to ambush mm. our military. It is easy for criminal elements to ambush our police or even to take creative action. You say, oh, we are going to raid a kidnapper's den by 3 o'clock. It is only police that have planned it. But by the time the, the, the operational team get there, the kidnappers have since taken off because there are paid informants within the police and all our other law enforcement agencies. So mm. my concern is that instead of looking alone at the law enforcement agencies and the police, we need to look deeper into the Nigerian society and see that the problem really lies with all of us. If we do not influence the employment of police personnel, we allow the process to run. And the best candidates right. are got it. Look, look right. there was okay. a time mm. that the National Assembly Committee had asked my, my organization, I led that team, to go around the country. Police had were recruiting people into the force. And uh, like in Kaduna, we found that some people that were recruited were were armed robbers. And in fact, when that information hmm. was given and the police came to the police, to the training ground, to try and, and, and apprehend this, they, they got the information early enough and ran away. So we are saying evil criminal elements end up sometimes being recruited into the police force at the mission. So it's now, a problem. That, that, that's, a very and, that's a very serious and, one. But, we, we, but, but the, the, uh, the, the, the final question I want to ask you, and, and very briefly now, what, what do you expect the National Assembly? Because this... Um, report is before the National Assembly now. We're, we understand it's before um, a, a committee of the National Assembly. What do you expect to see? Not much. Not much because I've just told you National Assembly is part of the problem. They influence, they, they put a lot of pressure on the police and influences the police actions. So what are they going to do? They probably will invite the Inspector General of Police to come and explain. And by the way, the Inspector General of Police was not on seat at, at the time that this, these things happened. So what are you going to expect him to do? Perhaps the only thing you will say, okay, now going forward, let us look, let us set up a mechanism to ensure that uh, there is proper and better control. But even when you have that kind of control in place, it's human beings that will still that will still uh, manage on on the paid police officers, police officers whose whose welfare is not being properly taken care of. So when you are confronted with this kind of situation and somebody comes and gives you money, much more than your salary for several years, and he tells you you want an AK-47, you will think, do you take this money and give it or what? So we still need to work on the persons that wear this uniform because you, the National Assembly will yes, say go and change the uh, the operation the, uh, the 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 control mechanism uh, for for and, and there are standard control mechanism for armories all over the world how weapons like this are kept it's not that the control mechanisms are not there it's just that the people that are on the this is where the issues are and, and this is where we really need to work at the issues uh, going forward well it's 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 a pity we just wait and see what happens but but the situation can certainly not be helpless at all. David Okoro, uh, Chief no, Security no, Strategist no, for saying, International I'm... Institute for Security and Governance Studies. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Opinions are free. Facts are sacred. The truth is universal. How in practical terms? Can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? President must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad region, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa forest. On DG360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts, and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. The new Nigeria is possible, the future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for go any governor to look for grant for ranching. Digi360, dissecting the issues.